What's up, students? It's your Sensei PGT. Welcome back to another class. Today I'll be going over the general process of how to crossbeat mushrooms. It's been a highly requested topic, and it's a little bit more complex than just taking two grain jars and putting them together in the same tub. I hope I can simplify the process down enough so that you guys can understand what you're doing when it comes to crossing in this hobby. So when I first started my mycology journey, I attempted to spawn two colonized jars together in a tub to see what would happen. And lo and behold, I ended up growing both the varieties out in the same tub. They just don't cross this way. They compete against each other for nutrients, and what you get is less than an ideal flush of both varieties. So in order to cross, you need to get a spore of one variety of your strain to mix and mingle with the spore of another variety. And this is easier said than done. If you look at a speck of spore underneath the microscope, you're going to see that there's hundreds or thousands of spores clumped up together in that speck. And your goal is to isolate out a single spore and germinate it. And then this single spore will germinate into what's called monokaryotic mycelium. So monokaryotic mycelium cannot produce fruiting bodies, and they only have one set of genetics. So when two monokaryotic mycelium meet, they fuse together, and this is called a clamp connection, and they form what's called dikaryotic mycelium. So the dikaryotic mycelium has two sets of the parent's DNA, and then they can produce fruiting bodies. And these fruiting bodies will shoot spores everywhere. And then these spores will meet, and then they'll mate, and then they'll continue the life process all over again. So essentially, you want to mate the two monokaryotic mycelium together successfully to crossbreed them. And here's a picture of what clamp connections look like underneath the microscope. And here's what monokaryotic culture looks like on a plate. It's very tomentose, and you're not going to find any type of rhizomorphic growth with monokaryotic cultures. So there's a few ways you can cross. I'm going to go over some of the popular methods, and if you guys want to go further down a rabbit hole, you're welcome to do some research on it yourself. So the first and most popular method is known as the zero dilution method. Uh, Gary from Fresh Farm Fungi has a great video series on this on his YouTube channel. So what you're doing is you're adding some spores into sterile water solution and you're mixing it up. And then you dilute the solution by adding more water to it. And basically you're going from like a 100x spore solution to a 10x spore solution to a 1x spore solution. You keep going down until you're left with a solution that has maybe 10 spores in it. And then this solution, you put this on agar and then you try and germinate out plates that might have 1, to 2, or 3 spores on it. And then you can collect your monokaryotic culture. Now there's another popular method in the community known as smash tech. And this method involves swabbing the gills of parent A and then swabbing the gills of parent B with the same swab. And this essentially mixes and mingles both spores together on the swab and when you germinate it out on an agar plate, there's a good chance the spores have made it with each other. So the issue with this method is that it's hard to prove if it's a true cross or not unless you specifically select two parents with like two wildly different traits so that the cross becomes more apparent and you can recognize it. So because you're throwing a bunch of spores together on a plate, you don't know whether you're going to get a random phenotypes of parent A or random phenotypes of parent B or a mix of AB or BA crosses. So this method, although it works, you're essentially just gambling. And so I ended up wasting a lot of plates trying to do the zero dilution and it didn't quite work out. So as a resort, I'm deciding to do smash deck. So what you want to do is get yourself some plates, some agar plates. I'm using malt extract agar. Then get yourself some sterile cotton swabs. You can find these on Amazon pretty easily. And then next you're going to need a set of parents. So these are the fine specimens that we're using today. Here is parent A. And then here's parent B. So I picked these out because they are wildly different from each other. So let's see what happens. So we'll open up our cotton swab here and get these prepped. And now what you want to do is just gently run the swab against the gills. Don't try and push down too hard because you're going to end up getting gill fragments. You really just want spores to be on the swab and you don't really need a whole lot. There's a lot of spores on here so you can see them on the swab, so I think that's enough for parent B. And then we're going to take the same swab, and then we're going to run it in the gills of parent A. So again, just kind of go in gently, try and get yourself between the gills, and 
Let's gently scrape across the gills with it. And then here is your spore swap. There we go. You can see spores on there. And now we're going to put this to agar. So pretty much right from the spore swamp, I'm going to open up my first agar plate. And we're just going to streak this across the surface of the agar plate. Try and rotate it around, try and get spores to land onto the plate this way. And then close it up. And then I'm going to run again on the second plate. So we're mixing and mingling all these spores together on the plate. And we'll do one more. Just rubbing spores all on the agar. And you know what? For good measure, I'm going to jam this one straight into there. Now afterwards, we're going to just wrap up our plates. Here, you can see the streaking across the surface on the plates. Just kind of give you an idea of my fancy artwork that I'm doing on my plates. So I'm using grafting tape here. I find these to be a lot more effective than parafilm. So, it's pretty much all I use now. So I'll go ahead and wrap up the rest of these plates. And when we come back, I'll show you what they look like. Here we are six days after the plates have been made. As you can see, a lot of spore colonies have started along the streaks that we made. So there's a good chance these spores have definitely mix and mingle. I mean, look at that. There's thousands of microscopic spores all up on that plate. So I've let these plates sit out for another week. So going on about two weeks here, this is what your plates can look like. This one looks pretty clean. Check the back side of it as well. Pretty good growth. And here's the second plate that we have. This one also looks pretty good. And then here's the third plate one that has contaminant it. and it's right where I jammed the swab into the agar plate so that contamination must have gotten on from my gloves and landed into that spot where I touched the stick at so I'm not going to use that plate because there's already contamination in there I throw that one away and we'll make some transfers from these other two plates that are good so I'm going to speed up this process a little bit here and I'm not making anything particular I'm just kind of picking out little colonies that I think uh, might have the cross in them I mean I'm really just picking out random chunks of this because there's, there's just spores all over the place so um, I just want some clean culture to go and I'm going to use these other plates here to inoculate grains with so here's one of the original plates that are straight from the spore swap. So I'm going to test this one out and just run it straight from the spores and see how that goes into these two jars. After inoculating, I'm going to just shake these jars and get the agars all mixed up in there. And then these are the plates that we made transfers out of from the initial spore plates. And I'm going to let these grow out and put them to greens as well and see what happens. So I fruited out the tubs and three of them ended up growing parent A babies. But then there's this one particular tub that was stalling and was having trouble fruiting. So I just kind of left it there and forgot about it and kind of overdue. And when it came time to clean it out, um, I ended up cloning that one guy there that survived. And I figured he might be the healthiest. So let's see what happens when we put that up to agar and run it back again and see what the next fruits come out. Now if you're wondering, I didn't end up growing anything from parent B in the tub, so this was the only one that's odd. 
so I ran that culture back and I figured since they were struggling for fresh air in the tubs, I decided to fruit them in a tent. And this, these are the results. And they look like a mixture of traits from parent A and parent B, so I would call this a successful cross. Anyhow, I hope this gives you a good basic understanding of how to cross. There's a lot of other methods you can use to cross as well, so these aren't the only two methods that are out there. The concept is the same, but you can execute it in many different ways. I'm not going to drag out the video any longer. If you guys stayed until the end of the video, I really appreciate you taking your time to learn with me. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.